Left All right, board members, it's, it's 6.15. I'd rather keep moving with this rather than hold us here. Um, if anyone has any objections, please tell me. But otherwise, we've noticed this meeting. We are recording it. We'll have minutes out there. I'm comfortable moving forward. Okay. If anyone objects, please tell me, and I'll honor it. But otherwise, I'm going to move forward. And Mr. Shook, I'll let you comment on the January 2024 minutes, uh, if you remember what your comment was. <laughs> well, this is pretty petty, but uh, page 2, line 32. Levi stated that these is interest in sublease. Should be there. Is interest in a sublease? That's all. <laughs> Thank Just you. To prove that I do read this thing. <laughs> oh, wait, I, I'm sorry. I just saw two on the next page. Yeah, and anger is spelled wrong too in that line. All right, so we've got page two, line 32. That uh, should be Levi stated there is an interest to sublease the hangar spelled correctly. Beneath his office, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and then I missed uh, page hold, two. Hold on, Melinda. Over on two. It was just another board member. I thought they were all on the board, first page. Page two, line two. Another uh, board member. Page two, line two. All right, and page two, line two, double board member again. Okay. Does anyone else have any comments, revisions to the January 2024 minutes? I'll make a motion. Uh, Thank you. That uh, we approve it with the changes. I second. All right, so we've had moved and double seconded, but I heard Talos first, so moved and seconded to approve the minutes as amended. Um, Further comments? All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. We will move on then to. I do not know how to control the screens at all. I don't know, Levi, if you do or anybody else. They were working. Oh, we just went to sleep. Are we good? Okay. Okay. Our next agenda item then is updates from the airport manager, and Levi, I will turn it to you. All right, I got a list to go through here. I'll just, I think the set thing we've been doing is I'll go cover topic and I'll pause for a question on topics and stuff like that as we move through here. Um, first item, uh, we are working with an engineering group that has a uh, on-call contract with the city to do a drainage review on the south side of the airport. We've talked about this a little bit in past meetings. Um, prior to really being able to develop anything on the south side of the airport in the future, we have to get a good general idea of what drainage improvement requirements are required on them. That's kind of been the hang-up for anybody who's asked for putting anything down there at the moment. It's always come to the question of like, okay, you know, the city's going to require us to do drainage improvements. What are those drainage improvements going to be? So we're uh, hiring a, I think it's Anderson is the name of the local engineering company with the contract of the city. They're going to go down there do an evaluation um, on that and then give us recommendations and then project cost estimates and stuff like that for moving forward with those improvements. So that's in the works. Excuse me. Any potential questions on that? Excuse me. All right. Um, the next thing I have, again, a kind of an old issue, but just an update on uh, sign repair during kind of an in-depth review of some of the airport signage and stuff like that. Some some deeper problems were found with some of the circuit boards in them and stuff like that. Um, so we had to order actually, I think, four new circuit boards for some of the signs out there. Um, that uh, plus some of the additional repairs are going to be pretty pricey. I think the total price tag on is going to be like sixteen thousand dollars to get that repaired. It was expensive at the point where we actually just priced out potentially getting new signs. And unfortunately, that priced out to be about $30,000. Um, so we'll probably be sticking with the repairs on those. Um, last I heard, they're expecting the new boards for those in April. So unfortunately, a long lead time on getting those boards in to get the signs fixed. Um, I should clarify, I'm speaking about the lighted airfield signs on that. Any questions on that? Vice Chair Durden. Which uh, signs are out? Uh, I've got the list. I've got a map. Um, there's just mostly that we're having issues with the, the direction signs and the location signs on the airfield. So, you know, the ones that show the runway and the directions to the taxiway and stuff like that. I think there's five in total and I think four of them need new boards. Um, I can't, you know, I can see them in my mind, but I couldn't tell you with any direct clarity exactly which ones they are. I have a map. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. Uh, next item I guess I got on there, um, I started just preliminary doing a quick little conference, summer conference review, kind of figure out what conferences we can potentially go to this summer. Um, of course, CAOA, Colorado Airport Operators Association, which later I'll actually give an update on that conference I went to here uh, last week. Um, they'll be having their course, their summer conference, I'll probably plan on heading into that. Um, one that's kind of in the works to potentially go to, there's a sustainable aviation conference. Um, going on in the United States in Albuquerque this year. If that's something that we could potentially do in an affordable fashion, that's high up on my list for something that I'd like to do. Um, so just kind of started thinking, you know, doing some preliminary planning for, you know, continuing education and training and stuff like that. So that's kind of out there. Anything on that? Okay. Um, uh, grants, starting to process through some of the grants. I actually just got the grant back from Harold for, you now look at the thickness on that thing right there. Um, I, had to, I had, to, had to go back twice because there are a couple signatures that got missed, but I just finally picked it up on my way in today. That's for the wildlife fence completion. Finally, hooray for that. Uh, so our airport will be less of a corral and more of an actually fenced off area. Um, so that should be, that work should be going on hopefully beginning this summer. Um, so processing forward with that. Any questions on the wildlife fins? Okay, I, we've talked about that one quite a bit, so. Uh, we did finally, finally, finally get um, bollards um, on site to uh, start uh, bringing up the fire hydrants, the gas meters and stuff like that to spec on the airport. So we, you know, pass fire standards and stuff like that. They are on site and those will be going in at public works' discretion when they have um, crews available and also when they can actually get into the ground and dig those out and put them in. Okay. Where am I? Um, taxiway removal, we did finally, much to the FAA's delight, to get that little old chunk of taxiway removed off of the end of 29, where it kind of hooks up to the blast pad. Some of you might not even notice it because it's it so grown over, you could hardly, you had to squint to see the asphalt out there. Uh, but there was an old taxiway which connected the blast pad area um, to that asphalt taxiway that, that wraps around off the end of Alpha. FAA hated that because they don't like surfaces um, that could potentially be confused for taxi surfaces. And so that's been kind of on their, uh, their uh, nitpicky list for a while. Uh, we did get that removed just a couple weeks ago, finally finished up. Questions on that? Okay. RFP, there's an RFP out right now for mowing, and I'm very excited to say that we've got more people interested in it this year. Uh, so hopefully we'll have some competitive bids out there. Um, we've also had some conversations with exactly what needs to be mowed. We've gotten better mowing maps now that we can actually put on those requests for proposals. So we've really got that dialed in better than we had to. Last year was kind of an ad hoc thing when our mower quit halfway through the season. So I'm excited that we'll get some, some good bids on that this year. Anything on mowing? Mr. Dean, uh, when are you going to start taking bids? Uh, so as of right now, I want to say two days ago, we just finished up making the official mowing map. Um, so to my understanding, that's supposed to be going out the end of this week or the beginning of next week to procurement. And then it's kind of at the discretion of procurement for how that gets out. So I will not venture to guess uh, when that's actually going to hit um, out there. You have a deadline or a cutoff, like a time you can... Well, we definitely have to have somebody <laughs> when the mowing season starts. Okay. <laughs> so that's what I will stress to them um, as we progress through that process. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Um, GIS. Oh. So something that we've kind of been talking about since I got here and... Public Works is now making more of a concerted effort to actually get done. Um, they do have a city system which is supposed to track all, if you will, points of repair. I forget the exact name of the program. It escapes me. Um, but they use GIS to track each individual taxi light, each individual sign, the windsocks, anything that potentially means um, maintenance. 
so they can go out there, they have a work log every time someone goes out there to work on it, stuff like that, increase efficiency out there. We started to do that in 2022 when I first got here and it kind of tapered off. So I kind of reinitiated that discussion with Public Works and they agree that we do need to get that. So we're going to get a team out there to start marking all the locations, putting in the GIS map, every taxi light, every windsock, you know, where the electric locker is, everything. So when there's called out for a job, it's in the city system as an identifiable point. Can you just define GIS? Uh, oh my gosh, can I define GIS? Um, <laughs> um, so it, it's essentially mapping is what we're talking about. Interactive mapping, um, getting out there and marking the specific locations of, pe of uh, area, you know, in this case, objects. So you have an interactive map that you can go to that's got data information, stuff like that. Thank you. Geographic information system. Thank you. <laughs> Geographic I information wanted, I always system. miss the G, but yeah. yeah. Thank you. Any comments, questions? All right. Um, oh, I had, had a little additional thing there that the minutes remind me of. There was someone interested in the sublease. I have since heard back from them, and they are that all their whole plans are kind of on hold now. Um, he was initially wanting to do a helicopter school in the area, and what he said was that in kind of the over the holiday season, he learned of a couple other upstarts. Um, on the front range that are starting helicopter training and he's kind of scared off by the competition it sounds like because it went from no competition to two other companies and he kind of he's kind of hesitating now it sounds like um, and the last thing I have on my list is hangar inspections uh, moving forward that's something that we've been talking about doing for the last couple years and I've been trying to put in all my communications let people know it's kind of coming um, what's really kind of kicking it off was I had a meeting with the fire department. They're also 100% on, they say they have to absolutely do hangar inspections for fire reasons this year. And while I hate potentially piggybacking, there's no reason why if two city, city entities need to do inspections, why we shouldn't be doing them at the same time, just so we don't inconvenience people. Um, so that is most likely going to come this summer. So right now we're thinking of strategies, uh, kind of the best way to make sure that we're being as accommodating as we can to everybody and hangar owners and stuff like that. So it'll probably be over the course of several days, including weekend days, over the summer to give people options to do that with. That's just kind of in the insipid stages. Um, the fire department essentially said, yeah, we absolutely have to do it. They haven't done them, I guess, since before the pandemic. Um, so they're a couple years behind on where they even need to be for their records. And that's kind of the last item I had. Any questions on that? Vice Chair Jordan. On the hangar inspections with, from the fire department standpoint, I've had them at my business, mm -hmm. and I know they come in and they say, nope, 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 and uh, they tell you to remove things, and they tell you space heaters and offices yeah. are a biggie. Um, and then they check everything else, and they make some recommendations. How does it go with the hangers? Is it's it it's going to be pretty much the same. So what I ask them to do, the kind of, we had in our preliminary meetings, I said, hey, can you guys, the ones that remember actually doing them before, I said, can you write up a quick list of the things that you found? that were not to standard. So the hope is they're going to write up a list of the things that they found are not to standard, and then we're going to publish that like way in advance. So we're going to say, hey, hangar inspections, and by the way, here are the things that most commonly we find to give people a way big heads up, you know, for yeah. so they don't even have to worry about it. Um, and just to be educated on what yeah. they consider a risk, you know, until they tell you your space heaters are a no-no, you don't. Yeah, they, they promised me a very nice list. Okay. And on top of that, they also said they always, one of the top things they always find is fire extinguishers not to code. Mm -hmm. So it's our plan, again, prior to the inspections, um, the city's actually said that they will hire a company to come out and actually service uh, fire extinguishers and they'll do it we'll do like a posting where there's they're like two weekends or something like yeah. that and we'll have like a table set up I don't know somewhere around the FBO and it'll essentially be hey come in bring your fire extinguisher you'll get inspected they'll get it tested you know if it needs to be recertified they'll do stuff like that I seem to remember we had that before yeah the so they said they yeah. did that yeah. once before and they got a really good response from yeah. it so they wanted to do it again good good yep. thank you and that's all I had for the update Anybody else have any questions for Levi? Yeah. Levi, then the other question. I'm oh, sorry. Mr. Dean, go ahead. Uh, snow Can removal, you move how the mic much down have you spent so far in snow removal? The what? Snow removal. How much have you spent so far in snow removal? For 2024? Yeah. Nothing. No, nothing. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So we've been fortunate to the point where right now, 
Um, we've only had a couple of snows, really, and the public works has just been kind of hitting the taxiways, the main runway and stuff like that. We haven't had to call our own call for since January. So um, doing pretty good so far. So we'll hopefully be within budget here. Okay. Yep. Thank you. We'll see what this weekend brings. Yeah, we'll see what this weekend brings. Um, Leva, my question for you is related to what Mr. Manley talked about in the first public mm -hmm. committee to be heard and invoicing yeah. and kind of details you can have on the invoice. And I apologize if I'm misunderstanding what you said since I can't ask you clarifying questions. This is awkward, but I want the chance for Levi to talk about it and then you can correct us if we're wrong at final public committee to be heard. No, um, no, absolutely. That's actually something that, because we've been, first of the year, been deep in to the financial side of stuff, and I've been doing more and more meetings with finance because I'm kind of finding some disconnects and stuff like that. Uh, so that's actually a conversation I had um, last week and again this week with them is kind of how we do the invoices themselves. So one of the first things that came out of that when we were doing this audit is we, we've decided that, all right, for CPI stuff, what we should probably do is an individual communication at the beginning of every year when we apply it, and then we'll just blast that out to the airport. So that's on there. But then the other question that came up is what data is actually on the invoices themselves? So when I send the invoicing data to uh, the finance department, it's, it's this myriad of information, right? It's got like the start date of the lease and the end date of the lease and what last year's lease rate was, what this year's is, what the CPI, and it shows the CPI and stuff like that. And over this last few months, I've been kind of, you know, dealing with some invoices and stuff like that and actually getting invoices back from the tenants. And yeah, in some cases, there's not quite the information that I would probably like to see on the invoices. So that's actually kind of on our docket for adjusting this year is what information is appropriate to put on those invoices and make them as clear and concise as possible. Yep. Thank you. I would I mean, hope, hope you'll take the feedback you heard tonight and I'll please give us more if, mm -hmm. if you don't think it's being reflected as they go through that. So thank you. Anyone else have any questions, comments for Levi on updates from the airport manager? Mr. Shook. Yeah, I would also like to see, Levi, um, the data that you're using for the CPI adjustment. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. My hangar complex in Monterey, we put out, we get a, uh, a letter from, we use the San Francisco CPI. And yeah. So just a little more information, you know, because in my case, and we've talked about it, you know, it's jumped up every year mm -hmm. with no explanation. I realize there's a CPI adjustment, but there's no explanation. So yeah. that's... And that's one of the kind of things that came out in my discussion with finance departments, too, is when I send this stuff out, all the data I have, like, it's supposed to show you what your lease payment was, what the CPI is, and what your new lease payment is, but they just haven't been putting that data yeah. on the invoices. So that was kind of the first step is like to not even have to worry about making sure that gets communicated to do a communication just to the airport that says okay here's the CPI you know so this the yearly CPI comes out in October and then we apply it in January so you know it gives everybody a little bit yeah. of a buffer and it's also way easier on our accounting purposes because we can separate year to year um, so the idea now is probably um, the 1st of January when we apply that CPI to go out and put that information Here's what the CPI is. You know, here's where it comes from. It's the essentially, I think it's the the bolder kind of area here is what the yeah. CPI figure is, and just do like a quick little version of my airport updates, if you will. But essentially, just focused on leasing and CPI, yeah. or maybe you know, just loop it into the January update to make it like a big bold front type. You know, the first thing on yeah. it, something like that, is kind of what we're thinking, or I'm thinking anyway, because it's just me. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Anyone else have anything at this point? All right. Then we can move on to the Colorado Airport Owner. I'm sorry. I want to say get close. Colorado Airport Operators Association Conference. Yeah. Um, so this is the called the Winter Conference mm -hmm. held in January in Denver um, for mostly airport directors, CDOT. Yeah, and a bunch of hanger-on consultants like me who mm -hmm. are trying to sell things to airports. Yeah. So 
Uh, I've got a few items, Levi, but I'm happy to let you kick it off. Absolutely. There. And I was just about to mention that I hope you helped me because I, of course, my notes were from the stuff that I thought was interesting and I wanted to bring back, so I didn't write everything down. And I've got some of mine, so <laughs> let's do it. Um, so it's just some top highlights. Um, the last few conferences has been very heavy on uh, re re uh, electrification and aviation, have been very heavy on... Uh, unleaded fuel. Um, this conference, not a whole lot of new information, I would say, on those two areas. Uh, they kind of seem to echo, excuse me, I've got a little indigestion there. They kind of echo what they said uh, at the last summer conference. Um, no huge updates. Um, I think, if I recall correctly, there has now another um, unleaded aviation fuel that has been approved by the FAA, and they just have to start now manufacturing it. Um, so that's one. Um, highlight another highlight from that was there is now the goal they want to be completely free of unleaded fuel and you correct me if I'm wrong here it's, was it within 30 years or by 2030 do you remember what they said well there's a it depends on who you ask okay is and <laughs> what it not, should be it there, there is not a consensus timeline okay so I mentioned that because I remember thinking oh my gosh they actually got a goal now so that's great um, Let's see, what else did I have? Um, there is new guidance to the FAA about uh, the use of land on airfields for non-aeronautical use. Um, essentially what they said is now anything that's non-aeronautical that, that is brought into the airport, the FAA's got to give their thumbs up to, whereas before it, it wasn't necessarily the case. Um, it sounds like there's not a whole lot of... Um, standard operating procedure for them to determine what is appropriate not yet they kind of said hey be patient with us we don't know what we're doing we just got this direction to to make sure we approve everything so i imagine that initially that's going to be a pretty informal process and they'll kind of formalize that as things move forward but not a whole lot known about that just a new point of information um there was a very good talk about leasing um not that we have a whole lot to we know we just went through doing new leases here and stuff like that. Um, but good talks, good information uh, came out of that. I took some notes for, you know, potential future stuff and kind of wrote it down, but that's it for that. Um, I did invite our local representatives. I sent them all communications to try to get them. This is the winter Colorado Airport Operators Association's meeting, and they call it the legislative session. They have a reception. Uh, the first night of the meeting where the kind of the, the state representatives are supposed to show up. Um, I did get one maybe <laughs> from a rep, but then she didn't show up, unfortunately. But otherwise, um, uh, at least they got an invite. And that's kind of the highlights um, that I have on mind for, for notes of substance anyway. Um, Harrison, was there anything that you wanted to add? To yeah, I have just a couple things to add, but um, Mr. Salamantine, did you want to chime in here? Or do you want to... Okay. Wait. Right. Cool I'll go quick if you don't mind. So, it, similar topics, Levi, but um, there is legislation pending oh. um, this year yeah. for with the House that would have a leaded fuel bill that would also change the makeup of the CDOT Aeronautics Board. This has not been introduced. I checked this afternoon. Um, but it is pending out there and certainly one that airports are very concerned about for timelines, regulations, tax impact, mm -hmm. um, as well as introducing, um, let's say, airport skeptics to the CDOT Aeronautic Aeronautics Board. Mm -hmm. um, nothing for us to do at this time because it is not introduced. The, the CAOA lobbyists are very much engaged. Mm -hmm. um, but... I also know that city council does take positions on legislation, and as it is introduced, I would bring it back to us um, in the future to see if it's something we want to recommend the council either supports or recommends different changes to. Um, it does not have to be introduced to, uh, to, to get sand, to make a recommendation to okay. Sandy on it, and then just to tell her that you would like to monitor it, because it's probably not one she would normally monitor. If... All right, then I would, I don't even know if I need to have a motion for that from the board, but I, I would certainly, I'll reach out to Sandy and just ask her to keep us in the loop. And as it's introduced, you know, bring it to this board and bring the, the text in. As I understand it, the text isn't final yet. Um, so it's a little bit of a moving target right now, but it does something that I'm watching for, you know, both this board and, you know, my professional interest as well. She may ask you to monitor it until it gets a number. Yeah, well, it's just fine. 
I, I'm keeping an eye on it. I just want people to know that one. Um, the other, I think just a couple things. There was an NREL presentation, the National Renewable Energy Laboratory, and they've done the last couple presentations. Uh, but this is on a sustainable aviation. It was about electrification and charging infrastructure. Um, and it was a very cool study. They monitored out or modeled out training activity and what it would mean for battery charging and cycles and things like that. Um, their kind of next step is taking a handful of airports around the state and modeling it out to the grid impact. And so Levi and I chatted with them after the presentation, um, given our the sustainability resolution that we've passed, given the fact that we own the airport and the utility, uh, that we'd really think we could be a good candidate there. There's uh, you know kind of no follow up. I just want to bring it up as something that um, you know we certainly put in their court that we, we we'd like to be included in that list because um, we think it would be a really good a good test case for us. Okay. Would you send me a note about that? Yes, I will. Thank you. And I've got two more here, and I know I have two people waiting, so I'm sorry, but I'll get you. Um, I spoke informally to our engineers with Garver, and with the disclaimer that I can't ask them to do anything officially or make recommendations to them, because I'm not the city employer overseeing them, I did talk to them about some of the things we've talked about on the board, um, like Southside Development, like enabling projects, um, and indicated a desire to have them at one of our meetings when we go into CIP planning, particularly to talk through that. Um, I've mentioned that to Levi. None of that is official because I can't officially do that, but um, it is something I will ask Levi to, <laughs> if he's willing to make that request to them so that they can come and you know, hear from us directly and present to us directly when we're at an appropriate point for that. And then last thing, a um, little less related, but I talked to David Ulane this week because he's the um, CDOT Aeronautics Director. Um, we happen to be on the same flight on Tuesday to the same event, um, but he knows about the air show, he has it on the calendar, and they are planning to attend. And they're very excited that the air show is back. So I just want to bring that up since uh, that came out of the conference as well. And then I'll go to questions. Uh, so Mr. Salamatine first. Yeah, given the new guidance, is that going to impact any of the current residents of the airport or leaseholders of the airport, I should say? Not really. No, that's just moving forward. Just um, retrospective. Yeah, it's just moving forward. It, prior to us approving any non aeronautical businesses, the FAA wants to also approve it. And it, at the same time, they didn't say that there couldn't be aeronautical. I'm sure this came out of some case where something was approved on the, F the airport that the FAA just wouldn't have approved so now they're giving everyone guidance to make sure that they tell them first i'm sure yeah so you don't have any concerns there's no one whose leases are going to renew soon that uh, may be impacted by that i'm not too worried about it i mean i can't think of any huge red flags and again you know just to reiterate they don't say that you can't have you know non air canal use they just want to know about it so i'm sure someone was probably abusing the privilege out there and you know like using 20 banks rows of hangers or something like that. That's probably what was going on. Thank you. Yep. Mr. Shook. Uh, yeah, uh, back to the proposed legislation that's going to be coming out. Mm -hmm. uh, I got an email from the National um, EAA Association, and AOPA is going to be in the fight. EAA is going to be in the fight. So we're going to have a lot of... Uh, I think help uh, with some of these large organizations. Yeah, and I'm, you know, I think there was, you know, obviously this is airport operators, um, and kind of their their organization talking about the the airport impact. So you know, a different impact then to EAA, um, but there was a rep from NBAA there, I oh, believe. Really? Okay. Um, who was definitely suggesting they were heavily involved in watching this as well. Mm -hmm. um, so they're very, you know, I, 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 there, there's a lot of interest in this. You know, I, I think what, and I forgot my summary that I have on my desk that I meant to bring that described this, uh, but it is about, you know, timelines for um, phasing out leaded fuel, what it means in the state. Um, there are definitely some tax impacts associated with it. Uh, potential subsidies, potential no subsidies, and then adding new members to the CDOT Aeronautics Board. Um, so kind of a whole bunch wrapped together. It was 
if I understand is Representative Kyle Brown, who is, um, I want to say like Arvada, Westminster, Golden kind of area, that's pushing yes, it. Louisville. Louisville. Thank you. Sorry. I have him very well. And so, you know, th th this definitely ties in with a lot of the uh, Rocky Mountain Metro Airport issues as well. So, any other comments, thoughts, questions on that? All right. Otherwise, I, I'm going to, I will email Sandy just so she's aware. Marsha, I will send you the stuff on the NRL presentation. Um, and, you know, I, I appreciate the opportunity just to talk about this. I'm lucky my job sends me. And so it's kind of nice that I can bring it back to yeah. to this context since that's not really why I'm there. I'm there to try to shill consultants. So thank you for letting me use you take advantage of that. Um, action items. Longmont Aviation Day. So in association with our air show and expo, Melinda asked that we add an action item to ask the city council to issue a proclamation designating September 14th, 2024, uh, the date of the air show as Longmont Aviation Day. You have in front of you a draft proclamation that I put together about 90 minutes ago, and it probably has typos, um, and it is very much a draft, but I wanted to get it out there for people to think through um, if we like this or want to tweak it in real time to you know, kind of get ahead of this and um, vote on making the request to council that they, that they approve this closer in. Um, I'll read it since... You know, it wasn't in the packet since it didn't exist until a couple hours ago. But this is a proclamation designating September 14th, 2024 as Longmont Aviation Day in Longmont, Colorado. Whereas the Vance Brand Municipal Airport has served the community since 1945, and whereas the Vance Brand Municipal Airport supports 490 do jobs, $24.1 million in payroll, and 68.04 million in business revenues, and whereas the airport is the base for over 200 aircraft, and supports more than 90,000 operations annually, and whereas the Vance Brand Municipal Airport will be home to an air show and expo on September 14th, 2024, and whereas the air show and expo carries the theme of the future of aviation to inspire future generation of aviators and showcase innovations such as aircraft electrification and alternative fuels, and whereas the airport and expo is open to the entire community to experience the Vance Brand Municipal Airport and to encourage young aviators. Now, therefore, I, Joan Peck, by virtue of the authority vested in me and the City Council and the City of Longmont, to hereby proclaim September 14th, 2024 as Longmont Aviation Day in Longmont, and I encourage all citizens to attend the Air Show and Expo at Vanceboro Municipal Airport to celebrate the future of aviation and be inspired by the new innovation and career opportunities. I will note I took this as a, from a different day proclamation and just tried to tweak it, so um, tried to, you know, highlight a little bit what's going on in the community with the airport and the expo, but I have zero pride of authorship and would really love someone to pick this apart if you have comments. Um, <laughs> Mr. Dean. Uh, the one thing I can see is uh, usually every year when I in the past, uh, there's always been like a, a different theme. And so I don't know if we want to lock in the future of aviation necessarily um, as like it's 100% because I mean every year you know, I've been trying to find like a different theme or something that, that Sort of flows, so it might be good to have like the future of aviation or other um, other possibilities of like uh, different uh, themes. To so my understanding, from Melinda, and please correct me, is that is the theme that for this year? That's yeah. this year, yeah. yeah. So this and, and this is just for this year. This year, okay. Oh. Yeah, it's just a one-time thing for this year. Okay. Any other comments, questions, revisions? Would anyone like to make a motion suggesting that the board um, request this from Council Vice Chair Jordan? I move that we take your draft and move forward to Council with it. Is there a second? I'll second. Yeah. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, so I will take this, put a recommendation to Council, and Levi, I don't know who that's going to move through city clerk or somebody, but we'll figure out yeah, how I'll to get that out into council. Yep. I can tell you. Yes, please. Council Member Martin. Um, you, uh, there is a, a form on the city web website, so request a proclamation. You can enter it all in there, and then you follow up with Don Quintana, who takes care of routing it to the mayor and all such. It would be polite to send an email to the mayor saying that you've done this, and uh, otherwise, that's all it takes. 
I will submit this with the backing of the board that we, we've requested it as the board. Um, and I'll follow up with Donnie and the mayor. Thank you. I appreciate that. We'll make this happen. Thank you. Um, we will move on then to final public invited to be heard. Does anyone wish to speak? Going once, going twice. Seeing no one, I will close the public, final public invited to be heard and move on to board council and or staff comments. Are there any comments from our board members to start with here? Possibly about the air show. <laughs> um, possibly about the interview that Melinda, you and I did with the Times Call that got us on the Times Call a couple weeks ago. Vice Chair Jordan, let's go. Thank you. I have that someplace in here. Um, that the Times Call article, so um, Harrison and I spoke to the Times Call, um, Matt, uh, the reporter, and he did a good job. And we've had, I've had a lot of people reach out after the article. So that worked well. And... Um, uh, we were just glad to get some press and get it out there in the preliminary. Um, I've got the poster that's our, we're, it's still always going to be in play with, especially what's featured at the bottom, the format, things like that. Um, we did uh, select an air boss, and so that's going to help us really start to coalesce the air show portion. I did meet the maintenance, the AMP that handles the Sonoran and Beauty based down at BJC. Okay. You probably know him. And uh, he said, I w was out and somebody was saying in airplanes and they were pointing at him. So I went over and asked him what he did. And he said, oh yeah, we're going to be at the show. We're going to be in it. I'm like, cool. Okay. <laughs> Good to know. So that was exciting. Um, so he's, I've got him looped in now for the, all the Airboss stuff. Um, John Grunsfeld. Thanks to Marsha. He reached out to Marsha. She sent him back around, and he's given me quite a list of resources to check in mm -hmm. um, for electric aircraft. Um, I was just going to go to buy and start and end with them, but he did give me Pipistrol and some of the other. And I mm -hmm. did see an article today about Pipistrol and that they're, uh, I think they have a real outreach effort, so they may end up. I don't think we'll have all of them, but um, we do. We do have some good options. And then, uh, so he gave me quite a bit. Of, quite a big list and gave me permission to throw his name around, um, use the astronaut card to see if we can get interest out here uh, with him being at, at Longmont. Malcolm met with Coloradans. They're interested in doing the car show portion. They're going to attend the next planning meeting on the 24th. The next planning meeting is Saturday, February 24th in Levi's conference room at 9 a.m. at the airport. Um, I have two production companies now that I'm working with to get bids on the logistics, the safety fencing, um, the art, the entrance, um, heavy lifting on chairs, tables and chairs, uh, sanitation, lots of different aspects that one's bidding on the sound stage and then the other one, his, he supports triathlon, so his... Um, what he carries around is a little bit different. So may be able to work with both of them, but still in the um, getting them information, and then they keep coming back to work on their bids. My capstone student and intern is presenting at the Lunar New Year at Saint Brain, at uh, Silver Creek High School on the also the 24th that afternoon. Um, so they're going to have a special uh, aviation center at the Lunar New Year, she's going to be doing origami paper airplanes, paper airplane races, some fun stuff like that, and that's a big community event as well that Silver Creek hosts. That'll be later that afternoon on the 24th. She's recruiting students from all the grades to volunteer, and then she's identified a 10th grade student uh, that she's going to bring along through the process. She's also bringing an 11th grader along because she she's probably going to stay in state to go to school, but she may be over in Gunnison or someplace. So um, she's been doing a lot of work and still really bridging with the Innovation Center to figure out what they're going to bring, how big of a footprint. So she came out to the airport with me on Saturday, and, and uh, between watching planes uh, to land and take off and all that 300-foot ceiling, um, we she got a good ground overview of the airport um, as an aviation student as well and then showed her the logistics of how the air, how the air show flows you know where you come in what the diagonal taxiway is mm -hmm. the ramp the apron the you know where the food court where everything gets laid out to give her her bearings and um, she that was part of her requirement um, for her project so her requirements meet uh, 
work very well with our needs, and that's been a real benefit. Um, and then again, the article in the paper was really beneficial for us mm -hmm. to get some more outreach, uh, have people reach out to us for volunteering. And um, I have somebody that I'm going to recommend to Malcolm to help with the volunteering, because he's taking more of the security side and the organization side, and then you have the public. And um, we might need to break that up, because he's got a lot of, a lot of hats that he's wearing. Um, but we're really, the team is showing up, doing their jobs, and um, taking the responsibility, and I feel like we're still bringing in a lot of resource possibilities at our meeting. Uh, we've got Dagmar Kress on to fly mm -hmm. in the air show portion at no <coughs> charge to us, um, and then bringing in electrification. There's a glider we're talking about. So I think we're really going to get um, a full spectrum and and then we'll get some more birds and we'll get you know some of the other things that people expect to see and uh, have a really robust program to show a kind of a kaleidoscope of things that happen in aviation and that's part of that future of aviation is to let the public know that it's not just you know getting at the oak and leaving the ground that there's um, hundreds of other jobs supporting what we do when we roll down that runway so um, it's, it's feeling good it's looking good thank you Wanda Awesome. Uh, um, Mr. Menza. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, add me to your list of warbird pilots. I can fly my... Yeah, I can fly the jet in it for you guys. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. Other board member comments? City council representative? <laughs> City staff? <laughs> Levi? I Not too much. I would just... I know that... Uh, I was going to ask real quick, um, air bosses, they're officially on board? Well, <laughs> let's say we've identified our air boss. Okay. We, he gave us his quote. Okay. Um, and it was far less than I expected. <laughs> yes. It was very favorable. Yep. And um, <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> yes. um, I think it's a go, and he's on the field. He knows us. And then the other air boss that I was referred to works with him and it just seemed to be the right choice and do, it was, you, do you know if they're coming to the meeting uh, but I don't so I okay. need to ask um, our lead for I that I was just going to check with that because that would be a great point to then start thinking about what paperwork we need to do and get the air right. boss kind of on board because that's kind of one of their their things to coordinate too. So yes. as soon as soon as they are we'll have that discussion and he said he would do the FAA paperwork okay. which is the waiver yeah that's not as critical as the DOD, which Matt's been working mm -hmm. on, and the Whiteman Air Force Base. Uh, I think that you, was. You know me. Was that submitted? That was that was the one from Whiteman from yeah. the Air Force Base. Yes. Yeah, I'm waiting to hear back. Yeah. So I did submit. So, so you submitted that. Yeah. So I'm I'm waiting to hear back. I haven't heard anything yet. So hopefully soon. If not, I'll reach out in the next couple of weeks if okay. we haven't seen anything. I wasn't so, sure from that email if you guys needed me to submit it or if you submitted it. So it sounds like it's good. It sounds yeah. Good. It seemed like there were some questions on it. No, uh, they sent me some, some stuff, but I mean, other than that, I, I fill everything out okay, and I okay. send it to them. So. Well, just let me know if you need yeah. Mr. Dean, did you have something else? Yeah, quick question for Levi. Is there anything we need for the, if we have a the car show portion, is there anything special for paperwork for that? Um, the short answer is probably not. <laughs> um, I did have a, a specific conversation with the FAA about that. Um, I said, hey, we're going to have a car show too. And they said, well, as long as it's not like the biggest part, you know, or obviously an event in its own. They said, then you can probably just loop it into the same paperwork. They said, if it's going to be more than that, then let us know. So the way I've been kind of approaching that is we progress forward and we know have it, start having a general idea of what that car show is going to be. I was just going to reach back out to that day and say, okay, here's about what we're thinking. Okay. And kind of at that point, you know, move forward. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yep. I, I do have a, a vision and then the Airbus, I trust they'll judge, they'll um, have final say on how that would work, but it would be... Uh, get the planes in the air for the opening, close the field, have the car show, have the parade, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, one one to two nine maybe on the taxiway, and then come around and be static at the entrance. And um, I think I'll have to address that in the ULPP as well. Mm -hmm. So we'll get it covered there, and then find out. And also, um, yeah, I don't think the police will. I don't think the traffic will be impacted with that it, but then it would be the FAA is that okay with them and drones remember mm -hmm. um, what can we do with drones mm -hmm. so um, we've got the 
the big hangar at Elite, the store, the one that's storing aircraft, and if they can fly them inside of there. And that'll also be an excellent conversation to have with the air boss. Yeah. Since they're going to be kind of in charge of. Yeah. And only yeah. because St. Brain, the Innovation Center, that's what they started with was the mm -hmm. drone program. And so it's been a big program for them. I, so I, I have a feeling that we'll probably be able to make that happen. I know that we addressed a similar situation at BJC, and it was a little harder to do it there, but that was also a towered airport. Um, I think as a general aviation airport, we're probably going to have a little more flexibility, but that's the conversation to be had moving forward. And that's why I'm really excited to start talking to the air boss and stuff yeah. like that, because now we can actually get kind of people on the same page about that as we move forward. Yeah, yep. exactly. Thank you. All right. Last call for anyone? Comments? All right. Hearing none, I will call our February 8th meeting adjourned. Thank you all very much.